welcome to the CNBC TV 18 special Aeronomics, the Air Asia story. I'm Shireen Bhan and we're in conversation with the chairman of the board of Air Asia India, Mr. S. Ramadurai, the founder of Air Asia, Tony Fernandez, and the CEO of Air Asia India, Mr. Chandalaya. Gentlemen, appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Congratulations on getting your fourth plane on board with uh, JRD Tata all over the plane. But Tony Fernandez, let me start by asking you because you've spoken quite candidly in the past about the ease of doing business in India and this government has been talking about how it would like to improve the ease of doing business, specifically on the 5 by 20 rule. Uh, the proposal now is to do away with 5 by 20 but to link international licenses to your ability to fly domestically and connect or improve domestic connectivity. Uh, domestic credit is what the government is now talking about and maybe in the initial years you won't even be able to do the short haul international routes, you will po possibly be able to do only the uh, long haul international routes. How do you take this? Well, I mean, obviously we're extremely disappointed. Um, we saw this as an opportunity now to rationalize the Indian uh, domestic aviation market make it more like the rest of the world where there is no differentiation between international and domestic um, you know we came in here to invest to build to create jobs mm. uh, to bring tourists into India to allow small medium enterprise businessmen to take their business outside of India AirAsia has been a great facilitator for small medium enterprise businessmen to move forward it's complicated um, the new system and uh, I'm not sure it benefits the, the people of India um, but uh, that's what we that's what we're seeing at the moment the policy we were hoping that the 520 rule would just be uh, abolished, abolished and uh, that would allow Indian Airlines new airlines uh, to compete on a level playing field mm. I think now you have a three stage three tier system um, you have the incumbents who looking at it uh, I assume have all the all the potential to do domestic and international short haul and long haul you have foreign airlines um, who actually have a, an advantage over the new Indian Airlines so Emirates can fly in and fly out whenever they want to internationally mm -hmm. yet uh, airlines such as ours are uh, actually a third division airline which we're only allowed to operate um, domestically so really disappointed and for me you know I was so excited about coming in here we've, we've invested um, we were even more confident with the new government coming in that this is going to be a, a great beginning mm. new beginning for Indian aviation so does this alter your view on India does it alter your expansion plans for the Indian market well I mean yes obviously it will alter our expansion plans if this I becomes don't. the law. Yes. Yeah. I'm still optimistic that common sense will prevail. Um, if you put people first, then um, you know the, the decision is very simple: uh, compete and allow the best man to win. Mm. I've always been. I've come from a free market. I've had to compete with government airlines, uh, state-owned corporations. But if you look at the success of Air Asia in Southeast Asia coupled with the other airlines, the people have benefited. Mm. We are phenomenally popular product in Malaysia, Thailand, sure. Indonesia. But as it stands today, and this has become a contentious issue, we've seen back and forth on what to do with 5x24 for the last 24 months now, if not longer, but aggressively over the last 20 months, 24 months specifically. Uh, Mithu, what does this mean now as far as AirAsia's expansion in India is concerned? You brought in your fourth aircraft today. Uh, behind schedule. Vistara that launched in January has already brought in its sixth aircraft. Is this going to mean uh, a more wait and watch approach as far as AirAsia India is concerned? No, look, I, I think um, we, just, we have really big ambitions. What we decided to do was instead of inducting planes in when the frequency that we had actually hoped for and then having to change our network strategies, change bases, change the locations that we fly to. He said, let's take, a, let's take a pragmatic view and see how the regulations kind of pan out. Mm. So frankly, it's very disappointing to see what has come out. Our view has always been that 520 needs to be abolished mm. and abolished in its entirety without restrictions, without any kind of prohibitions or clauses. Uh, unfortunately, what's coming out now has a lot more gray area to it and has a lot more 
I think areas which would confuse and make it more complex mm. for airlines to you know adhere to flying internationally. So I think we still are you know we still have our plans for growth mm. but I think we are still looking at this, this but would it be would it be safe to assume that if this were to become the norm and this is of course pending cabinet approval but if this were to become the norm then we are looking at Air Asia India going slow as far as its expansion is it, uh, as far as its expansion is concerned I think you know if you break it down we've always had a plan to grow robustly within the domestic market but we were always ambitious about going international and the whole idea is that we want to, as Tony just said, give more Indians the ability to fly internationally abroad, get them to places that they've never gone before, and mm. give people who've never flown an opportunity to fly. What about the domestic opportunity? Because you, you know, yourself articulated that, that, that India is the size of a continent, the domestic opportunity is huge. Don't you believe that maybe it would make economic sense if you were to focus on domestic connectivity, even with the international constraints of being in place, and that would perhaps serve you better? Yeah. I think there are two things here. One is, again, India is unique. Domestic fuel is much higher yes. than international fuel. If you were to get rid of the state taxes, mm. then again you level up the playing field. So we have so many different steps here. And to really compete effectively, you have to, you know, so you, we're competing with one hand tied behind us when Indigo or Air India or Jet um, has the ability to fly international ability to hub and spoke mm. and yet we are not able to compete on a, on a free uh, on a, on a so level if, if, if this continues would you review your investment decision for India would you review being in India no I mean especially after today I would say no we will we will we'll fight because the good always win this industry cannot be controlled by one or two people mm. you know yes we may take a step backwards now but I've been in but you still believe that this is years. vested interest at play? You don't believe that this is a government decision, a sound government thought through policy? You still believe that this is the rest of the industry ganging up against you and Vistara? 150,000 million crores percent, whatever number you want to call it. Um, yes, 100 percent. Because look at the rest of the world. The, the vested interests have been able to convince um, the powers that be that this is beneficial. We now have to, we, Vistara, whoever else, has to show that actually India benefits by more competition. Mr. Ramadurai, you know, you're now working with the government, and we've often had these debates on which way policy swings and who's responsible for making policy swing, and I, I, I'm not getting into whether there are vested interests involved here or not, but the fact of the matter is that this could be policy in the next fortnight or so. What then happens to plans for AirAsia India, and do you believe that maybe uh, the government will adopt a more pragmatic approach, or maybe you haven't been able able to convince them in terms of selling the consumer story to them as far as this rule is concerned? I think you answered the question yourself. Number one, with regard to tourism being a great opportunity for this country, and it has been articulated by our Prime Minister himself. Second is job creation and skills is again on top of the agenda because without jobs, with the growth in the economy, we're going to have a problem. So when you talk about tourism, when you talk about job creation, unemployability, entrepreneurship, I think the policy making and the way to look at it in a holistic manner is very, very critical. Mm. Anything that constrains any industry, any new player coming in with an open competition, I'm sure they will hear it in totality. Mm. And we, like you said, have to keep convincing them why it's good for the people at large because that's the kind of traffic mm. we want to build here. But let me ask you this, in terms of the operational performance now, yeah. uh, your December quarter loss has come down to about 21 crore rupees versus mm -hmm. 29 crore rupees in the previous quarter. You were hoping to break even with six aircraft mm -hmm. on the ground by June. Does that still stand? Well, it depends if we get the six aircraft by that time. I, I think, you know, fundamentally, as Tony just mentioned, I think the biggest cost that we have domestically is fuel. So the nice but you've seen prices coming exactly. off quite sharply. So the, so the positive for us has been that prices have come down, not at the levels of what we're seeing globally, because uh, India has got its opaque pricing system. So it is filtering down to us. So we are seeing um, we are seeing benefits come down to the bottom line because of that.
So you're yeah. not sure you'll be able to do six aircraft by June? No, it depends on, you know, I think we need to sit down and just see what our fleet expansion plan would be. Your aspiration of making India a hub for Africa and Europe even, will that hold if, if this new rule comes into play? Yeah, well, look, rules are there, rules can change. And uh, it isn't in play yet. You know, we, we, we've, we've still got time to try and convince uh, the regulators that this is a step backwards for India. You'd want, you want for, the, for the MRO to be successful, you need yeah. more, more aircraft, aircraft. Yeah. right? The yeah. industry needs to grow. Yeah. And if you're restricting Vistara, ourselves, whoever the future airlines mm. are, it seems to be counterproductive. Mm. Uh, Tony, let me ask you because, you know, globally your focus as far as AirAsia is concerned is capital preservation at this point in time. So you are looking at your utilization rates, you are looking at sale and leaseback arrangements. Uh, in that context then, uh, you know, where does India stand? Because you are looking at expanding into markets like, or further expansion in markets like Thailand, Japan. Where does India then currently stand yeah. as far as AirAsia's global plans are concerned, considering the fact that you also posted your first loss in two years? India is emotionally strong for me. My father's Indian. You know, we're, he's from Goa. It's no coincidence. One of the first routes we did was Bangalore Goa, mm -hmm. and in KL, we're going to launch Kuala Lumpur Goa as soon as we get the rights. Mm -hmm. um, and I know India well, and it pains me to see how difficult it is to get to India, mm. to see this wonderful country, and for people to actually have a holiday mm. outside of India. So, um, but to answer your question directly, yeah. firstly, number one, we're not giving up. Number two, I can't answer you so directly on the, on the use on the equipment of capital because we don't know. Maybe in two weeks we can have a slightly different rule. Okay. Maybe it's there, then we'll have to relook at it. Mm. But let me make it very clear, we're not going to give up.